Today I want to show you guys how to make money flipping houses in Barrie, Ontario. Let's get into it right now. So today I'm joined by AJ, who is a new student to our house flipping coaching program. And he just made a whopping $95,000 on his recent house flip project right here in Barrie, Ontario. And he did all this in about four months time. So AJ, before we jump into the house flip, I want you to tell us a little bit about yourself, why you joined the coaching program, just so we can get an understanding of who you are. I'm an entrepreneur, tried my hand at many things, and I'm still doing a few things. I got into house flipping uh, about a year and a half ago. And this was the first one I want to do independently. Why I joined the program was an insurance policy. So I had a partner, they controlled a lot of the decisions and there's a few things I just want to make sure that things went on without a hitch and it made sense when I saw one of your uh, YouTube or podcasts, uh, you knew what you're talking about and I'm like, you know what, if at least I have a call or I need a question answered, I can get it. I'm going to make far more than what the cost of the program is anyways, but it'll make my life easier. Which I'm really glad you joined the program when you did because this property was an awesome project to see and really fun to work on. And you did a really great job on the sourcing part because when we're looking at properties and we talk about this all the time you want to find properties that are in good neighborhoods the property that you're buying and the neighboring properties have good curb appeal or at least the curb appeal potential has to be there this area has a lot of amenities and when you look at the property itself it already has everything that you need in terms of the layout to make it a relatively simple flip that you're not going to be stressed out working on where it has three bedrooms on the main floor bathroom kitchen the basement ceiling height is appropriate and easy to work with and the layout is pretty general so you don't have to go through an extensive renovation to do structural work which is exactly what you want if you're looking for a property that you can flip and you can just tell when you're looking at the neighborhood that this is the type of place that a family can see themselves moving into and growing into which is what you want to buy so that you can sell a turnkey product to the right buyer now we are going to go take a look at the property right now but make sure to stick around to the end of the video where we're going to discuss the numbers so we can show you how you can make a project work for you like this as long as you control the numbers appropriately but now let's go take a look at the property hey guys we're at the property i'm here in barry with aj looking at his latest flip project he just finished it and it's hitting the market today so right now aj i I want to ask you what made you choose this property and how did you find it so i found it from a wholesaler it fit my sweet spot good price detached big lot is there anything about this area that you particularly liked or it's a city and i think people are coming up here it's super close to the go station it's an older neighborhood closest part of barry to toronto fairly close to 400 so yeah. it had all these like factors going for it how much did you pick it up for 582 582 000. how much did you spend renovating this place maybe 90. what we want to look at is to see what type of work you were able to get done for that type of price point and what type of returns we're going to see so we're going to go inside take a look at it okay so aj one of the first things i want to address as we walk into the space is the kitchen to living room this obviously has a big wow factor you kind of come in here and this looks very impressive so i want you to walk me through the thought process why did you decide to do this and what led to this decision so this is already open concept but i know like this, this is the money maker right when someone's going to come into the house they're going to look at the kitchen they're going to look at this space now this kitchen was it previously already connected to the living space it was but the difference was there's a huge tree here in the middle it was configured a little bit differently but the open concept was here how much would you say this island ran you in terms of cost. This plus that, that's a lot smaller, 2,400 plus stack. You obviously did some pretty standard things here when it comes to the black and the white with the kitchen cabinets and the stainless steel appliances. You used an interesting tile background here. Tell me the thought process behind this design. I wanted to go gray because we already had gray going over there. It was that or go two-tone countertops. Ultimately, I ended up making the better decision just the way it plays out the eye. Of my options, I want highest end. Of the three options I was kind of uh, contemplating, that's another place I'm just gonna get my money back I won't wow here. Okay, how much did this run you a square foot? $6.99 or $6 a square foot, something like that. Technically speaking, I think one of the good things anybody needs to consider is that when you're working with a small space, because this is not that many square feet, but even at six something a square foot, that's actually quite a bargain, I think, for this kind of a, a tile. As we come into the living space, obviously there was a wall here previously. Did you remove the wall? No. So there, like I said, there's a tree here in the middle and I removed that tree and there was an old school HVAC uh, hot water tank pipe that ran through once we uh, took the tree out. Take that off so the kitchen opened up, but there's no wall we removed here. I see you left some outlets there for a TV. Yeah. So I was going through Pinterest or Instagram. It's up to you whether this is a reading room, but they have that option of putting a, a TV stand. There's a lot of wood behind there. The addition of a fireplace, I feel a lot of people struggle with whether or not it's affordable to do. What kind of effect does it have? Adding a fireplace here, was it expensive? How did that look out for you? Like it's a good deal. I got it maybe, I think 400 bucks. So you got this for about $400 and you got this. What What is this? This is some kind of tile from a tile guy. I got this roughly, I think $7 a square foot, something like that. 
for a thousand bucks, you have a nice feature wall like this. Yes. But let's talk about the decision-making process for these big, bold trims here. So A, I think they're interchangeable. My baseboard could be used as trim. My trim is maybe a little shorter. I think it's easier on my labor. It's cohesive with what we already have kind of going on. From a style perspective, it's a win as well. It's not just a functional thing. Did you add this patio door over here? There was already a patio door. We just put a new one in. We added the steps, we added the deck. Tell me a little bit about this washroom. It didn't change anything in terms of layout, paint, new tiles, fairly quick turnaround overall. When you think about it, most of what you're doing here comes out to maybe about 100 square feet, 150 square feet for like everything, for even the wraparound tiles. So I mean, even if you're spending like a, a little bit extra money, it's not going to add up to that much more in the grand scheme of the, what you're spending. I think that's where a lot of people confuse. They get on a per unit price. On some situations, it really look at the all in on that. And it, if it's not that big, it's okay. So now in the master bedroom, you obviously did minimal stuff here in that you, you did the standard floor, you did the baseboards, you installed the pot lights. I noticed that the window is not perfectly new. So what can you tell me about the decision of when you decide to keep this and when it's good enough that you don't have to change it? The same logic that goes on in, uh, in the other room really, yeah. right? So this is one of the back rooms. We did clean it. We painted as much as we can, right? I don't think this is going to wow you in the front, yeah. right? So it, it comes later in your decision making. And at that point, I think you're already wowed by the big things. Window was one of the expenses I had to cut because I had to spend in other places. The brick wall is obviously original. What made you decide to keep that as opposed to just drywalling over it? I think it gives it a little bit of a, you know, a different perspective. We were going to spray paint it. I, I just didn't get around. That's the only thing I would have done different here. This basement obviously has good ceiling height. There's more than enough space down here for a unit. So if you were going to make something into another unit down here, how would you go about doing it? This window yeah. can easily become egress. There's another window you could do that with as well. One of the potential slots to add a kitchen, the laundry room, the infrastructure in place over here. So this could work perfectly. And then it's on you depending on like what your layout and design is if you want to keep their bedrooms where they are or you want to reconfigure them because if you keep them there you just call it a batch. Okay so this is a secondary washroom in the basement. Was this here or did you add this on? This was already here. I think it's a very functional layout. The shower is nicely tucked away and it's actually quite sizable. The guy who lived here previously was a big guy. I think like 6'6", six, six, 300 change. So he built a custom shower for himself. Like this is not a normal size. Look at it. It's an octagon almost. The only judgment call I had was do I tear that down and make something standard but from a cost basis 50-50 and I think it gave it a different appeal. If you keep that the same you don't really everything just kind of falls in place right the toilet goes there the sink goes here i think you focus the money well because even as we get to the front of the property now on the outside you can see that you focus some effort here and i think you did it in an easy way too with just colors you just painted things you did a black garage you did the black window trims and you did the black porch and, and this porch was an enclosure so the guy was a hoarder kind of a lime green where the gray is right now so we just opened up we didn't do anything major the idea is hey if we can keep the same footprint less work less work is more in, in a sense you know yeah, as exactly. opposed to make a new deck or anything like that so that is the property in a nutshell what it looks like and what we did to it but wouldn't you know it the property is now already sold and as we said we made ninety five thousand dollars on the sale of this property in just four months time. So numbers wise, we're going to break things down into four categories for you. We're going to talk about acquisition costs, carry costs, renovation costs, and finally sales costs. So AJ, why don't you walk us through it? Acquisition costs were 65,000. That includes the assignment fee, land transfer tax, the lawyer's costs. Carrying costs were 15 grand over four months. That's mainly the interest uh, on the mortgage, but also includes the home insurance and the utilities. Renovation costs were 80 grand. That includes everything from a new kitchen, new washrooms, it includes the Labor, the outside work, the closing costs on the way out were uh, roughly 40 grand. Realtor fees, lawyer fees, associated taxes. And if you think about it, you being able to sell the property for as much as you did, which is how much? $845,000 $845, for a nice property like this in Barrie, Ontario. Well, that was really great and helpful. So if any of you are interested in house flipping, want to know more about real estate investing or want to get in touch with us or AJ, we're going to have some information about us in the description below. AJ, we're going to have some of your information there as well. If you want to ask about our projects or learn how to flip houses the way we do, make sure to connect with us. We have coaching and training programs to help you up your real estate game. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and we will see you on the next one.